We are looking at domain and range of quadratic functions. So let's zoom in to the left side. This quadratic function has endpoints. It doesn't continue on and on forever. So for domain, that is our x values. So we always think, how far left does it go and how far right does it go? I'm going to make my text box a little bit bigger. And I'm going to change the color. Make it bold. So our domain is from left to right. So we look at the x-axis and we see how far left will the function go. So I start at the origin and there's a point. If we kind of go up, 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 um, it looks like it goes all the way to here. So it's going by one. So one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So this would be negative five. So it goes to negative five. And then how far right does it go? So we go the opposite direction from the origin. See, it'll go there. It'll go only to two. So we know it goes negative five to two. So this will be a compound inequality. We'll put X in the middle and write them from least to greatest. So from negative five to positive two. And we always use the less than symbol. We can add in less than or equal to if it is also included in the set. Is negative five included? Does this open circle mean it's included? No. So then we'll just put a less than symbol. Is the positive two included? Yes. So we'll put less than or equal to. And then I kind of scoot them together now. Now with the range, that's how far down and how far up. So we start at the origin. Does it go below the origin? No, but what? how low does it go? One. Yep, so we'll put one. It's compound inequality, so y. And then how far up does it go? Follow the y-axis all the way up. No. Okay, so where is that at? 17. So it goes from 1 all the way up to 17. For one, is one included? Does it actually go through one? No. Yeah, because that point would be at negative two, positive one. There's no open circle there. So if it runs straight through that point, it's included. So this will be a less than or equal to symbol. And then for 17, is 17 included? Does it go all the way and touch 17? Yes, so it's also less than or equal to. And then just format it so it's a little bit closer together. That's it. Okay, hey, the next one, example two, a quadratic function has a maximum of two, negative three. Let's go ahead and put a point. So insert um, a shape. Let's do a circle. Let's make a little point up here. I'm gonna make it red. So I made a little point using the shape tool. I made it red so I could see it real good. So at two, negative three. So 
over to 2, down to negative 3. The only information we have is a maximum at 2, negative 3. What does that mean? How is the quadratic function going to look? Oh, I guess I could do it like that. Did y'all see how I made that? Escape. Uh, I don't really like I don't know how to use that. So a maximum would mean it's going to be a hill. So I'm just going to make a quadratic function. I'm going to make it darker. Maybe red and then make it a little thicker. So if it's a maximum, it looks like a hill. It's going downward. And we don't know how it's actually going to look. All we know is the maximum point is 2, negative 3. So let's look at what would be the domain from left to right. If this is a quadratic function, isn't it going to continue on and on and on? Yes. So domain is all real numbers. But the range, range talks about how high and how low. How low does it go? Can I keep on going down the y-axis to what? Forever. And then how high does it go? Negative three. So y is going to be something negative three. What inequality am I going to use? Is it going to be greater than or less than? And is negative 3 included? Is there a point that we could put plot? So it's less than or equal to. I need to underline that. There we go. Why is less than or equal to negative 3? Okay, let's go to the next one. A quadratic function containing the following points. Yes. So it says it's the function. It's not just saying here are the points. It's saying here's the function. Why don't we grab that point that we used last example? So I'm going to grab this point. Or make a new one. <gasps> Did y'all see with that I did that? Okay. Here we go. I grabbed a point. There we go. So it looks like I have five points, so let's plot these. I'm going to zoom in even more. Plot the points for it, for it. Uh, negative one, zero, zero, negative one, one, zero, two, three.
I'm going to come over here and grab this parabola that's on slot eight and then paste it over here. Okay, so we have it graphed. Do y'all have it graphed? Y'all need a few more seconds? And I grabbed this quadratic from slide eight. That, that picture? Yeah. So copy it, control C, and then come back over to your slide. Control V. Oh. Create a text box so we can put domain and range in there. So domain is our X and Y. So how far left will it go? How far right? So what's our domain? Okay, then our range. Is zero the lowest one on the Y's? Look at our Y's. Negative one is our lowest. So greater than or equal to negative one. So just a quick way to check that would be to look at your Y values on here. So that is our lowest, which is right here. If you look at it, it almost looks like it's at zero. So don't be caught with a mistake like that. Okay, right, domain and range, you got them typed up. Okay, the last one from an equation, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Let's graph it in our calculator. x squared minus 6x, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. Yeah. Graph it. So go back to y equals. Make sure this says minus x and not negative x. Oh. Oh, that's why we work on the ESC thing. Oh, the negative and the minus. Ooh. Yeah, use this as an operator, this as a negative. It has parentheses around it. It changes it. Hey, graph. This is going to go on and on forever because we're only looking at a narrow window, but it's going to go on and on forever. So what do we know about our X's? All real numbers. I'm going to copy and paste this text box down here I'm being resourceful or lazy whichever one you want to call it I don't know. and then what about the range
What's the um, lowest? What'd you say? Yeah, y is greater than or equal to zero. Because the lowest it goes is zero. Okay, you have a domain and range worksheet that I will post online and you'll put your answers on a Google form. Or I'll pass out the paper in class.